Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. Today we'll have our 89th lesson in the series of vocabulary words. Day number 89. Let's get going. Yesterday, on day number 88, if you recall, we learned several words. Several words having to do with the fact that the person wants to fight, person is not very friendly, person is not very uh, uh, very approachable. Someone who wants to fight, someone who always wants to argue, we learn a whole bunch of words describing such a person. Today we're going to continue, today we're going to continue with that, uh, 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 that theme, at least in the first, so to first, first two or three words. Let's learn the very first word. The very first word we have here is Come bad if. Combative. What does combative mean? Combative means exactly what it says. It means somebody who wants to fight. Combative means wanting, wanting to engage, wanting to engage in a fight, wanting to engage in a combat. Wanting to engage in a fight. Somebody who is belligerent. Belligerent was the word we learned yesterday. Somebody who is quarrelsome. Quarrelsome means somebody who wants to quarrel all the time. Somebody who is pugnacious. Again, something we learned yesterday. And finally, bellicose. These four words we learned yesterday on day number 88. That's what combative is. Combative means somebody who wants to engage in a combat, somebody who wants to engage in a fight, somebody who wants to quarrel all the time, somebody who's quarrelsome, not very friendly. Let's go to the next word, shall we? Let's go to the next word. Next word we're going to learn, let's put that was it. Bellicose, quarrelsome, pugnacious, and combative. We learned yesterday. Let's move on. The so next word we're going to learn is can, can. Tang, tang, cur, us, cantankerous. Cantankerous doesn't necessarily mean that the person wants to fight all the time. Cantankerous doesn't mean the person is quarrelsome or combative or bellicose or belligerent. It just means the person is very ill-tempered. Some somebody who's always very grumpy. Somebody, somebody who is always very grumpy. Someone who is not, who is not approachable. Someone who is not very friendly. Someone who is not very amiable. Ami means friend. Ami is where the Spanish word amigo comes from. Ami is the same word they have in French uh, for, for friend. Mon ami, my friend, amiable, friendly, somebody who is approachable, somebody who is social, somebody who is uh, nice natured, uh, good natured. Cantankerous person is not good natured, he is ill tempered. He is ill tempered. Somebody who is, somebody who is ill tempered. He has a bad temper. Somebody who is quarrelsome. A disagreeable person. A disagreeable person. Disagreeable. Disagreeable is the word we're going to learn next. What does it mean when we describe somebody as being disagreeable? Shall we learn it? 
It doesn't mean that they want to agree. Disagreeable doesn't mean that the person doesn't want to agree. Disagreeable means all of these words. Disagreeable means cantankerous, bad tempered person, somebody who is grumpy. And the word is disagreeable. This O disagree. Yes, I know you find it annoying sometimes the fact that we put down the pronunciation of even the simplest word, but that is exactly what we do here. We make a point of putting the pronunciation of every single word, no matter how simple the pronunciation might be. A disagreeable person is someone who is cantankerous, somebody who is ill-tempered, somebody who is always grumpy, somebody who, who you, whom you cannot approach very easily. Whom, not who. Whom you cannot approach very easily. How do I know it's whom, not who? Because you would say, I want to approach, I want to approach him. I want to approach them. I want to approach, I want to approach them. I want to approach him. That tells me that it should be whom, not who. Somebody whom you cannot approach very easily. He's not approachable, he's very ill-tempered, he's very grumpy, he's very ill-mannered, he's very quarrelsome. And such a person, such a person can be described as being cantankerous or disagreeable. I don't want to play with him, I don't want to work with him, I don't want to work with him on the project, he's very disagreeable. He has a very disagreeable nature. He has a very disagreeable disposition. I don't want to deal with him. I don't find him, I don't find him pleasant. I don't want to be around with him. I don't want to be around him. He's very disagreeable. Let's learn one more word. Next word. The next word we're going to learn has nothing to do with being disagreeable, being, being unfriendly, being quarrelsome. It's just a word that comes to my mind when I, when I hear of people wanting to fight and people wanting to be combative and quarrelsome. A word always comes to our mind, which really doesn't mean that the person by nature is wants to fight. This word that we're going to learn simply means he's a boxer. He boxes. That's what he does for a living. He is a, he is a pugilist. Pew, you see, pew, ja, list, pugilist. It's a noun, of course. It just means he's a boxer. Pugilism is a noun. Pew, Joe, Liz, um, pugilism, which is a noun, which just means boxing. The adjective would be pugilistic, fighting with your fists, fighting with your fists, want to box. A boxer is called a pugilist. Let's move on. I don't know why we had to learn this thing, but we did. Let's move on to something entirely different, okay? A new word. I'm going to change my marker because I think this marker is about to die. This marker is moribund. This marker is moribund. On the verge of dying. Don't ask me when we learned the word moribund because I don't have the list of words with me right now. I cannot tell you precise day when we learn the word moribund, but we have learned it. I know we have learned it because that's what I say always when the marker is about to die. My marker is moribund, it's about to die. Let's learn this word. This is a very simple word. This is a very simple word and of course, most people know the primary meaning of the word, but the word has two meanings. Listen very carefully. The word has two meanings depending on how you pronounce it, depending on how it is pronounced. Let's first, let's, let's first deal with a simple meaning, the meaning that you already know, which is in, well, it. Invalid. Invalid means like exactly, you know what it means. Invalid means it's not valid. It is not valid. It is not legally enforceable. 
if someone tells you that this contract is invalid, that means uh, you cannot enforce it. It's not going to stand up in the court. This document is invalid. It's expired. This passport expired three months ago. It's invalid. You can't travel on, the, on this passport. It's not valid anymore. It is not enforceable anymore. It has no force. It has no, it has no effect anymore. You can also say, you can also use the word invalid to describe something that is faulty. If you tell me that my argument, my rationale, my thinking is invalid, that means there is something wrong with my argument. There is something wrong with the points that I'm trying to make. You're not making a valid argument. You're not making a valid argument. Your arguments, your rationale is invalid. Don't confuse the word rational, rational with the word rationale. Rationale is something that we have also learned in the past. I don't remember which day. Something that is not based on, something that is not based on, not based on sound reasoning. If it is not based on sound reasoning, you say it's not valid, it's invalid, it's not based on sound reasoning. Now let's learn the same word, but this time we're going to pronounce it differently. The difference is going to be in the middle syllable. Instead of val, instead of val, it's going to be vo. It's going to be vo. In, in, were, lit. You see? Here, here we have va, valid, valid, were. Invalid, invalid. The second syllable is were. Invalid. What does it mean? when we describe someone as being invalid. And it is going to be a person, not a thing. It's an adjective to describe a person. An invalid person, if you describe somebody as being invalid, is a disabled person. A disabled person. Person who is handicapped. Person who is How do you spell chrono, chrono, chronically? Chronically. Chronically. Chronically ill person. A chronically ill person is a person who is ill all the time, person who is sick all the time. They have some, some disease, something that prevents them from moving about very easily. They cannot move around on their own. Maybe, need, maybe they need a stick or maybe they need a wheelchair. They're handicapped. They're 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 not they're not able. They're disabled. Their body is uh, they're not able bodied. They're not able bodied. They are disabled. A disabled person is said to be an invalid. My my grandfather cannot come could not come to you himself because he is an invalid. He is an invalid. Do you understand? He is not able to move about himself. Let's learn the next word. So don't confuse the two pronunciations. Invalid, invalid. Invalid, invalid. Let's move on to the next word. The next word we're going to learn is D Bill. E date. Debilitate. Debilitate. What does it mean if somebody says that they are debilitated or they had a debilitating injury? It means that debilitate means to, to become weaker. To become, to make, to make weak, to make feeble, to make Inform. If someone says that they had a debilitating injury, 
injury that have made them weaker, feeble, and firm. And firm is something that we learned before, or no, we're going we're gonna to learn right now. That means they're no longer able to move about as they were before the accident. The accident caused me a debilitating injury. And I can no longer walk without a walking cane. I need a cane to support me when I'm walking because the injury was debilitating. Let's learn the word inform right here. Let's learn this word. The word is inform. In firm, which means not sound, not sound, not valid, not robust, or it could also mean, so that's one meaning of the word infirm, the second meaning of the word infirm is to be weak, to, to be weak in body, to be weak in body, especially due to old age. If you have a weak body, you cannot move about very easily like you used to move about 10, 20 years ago, that person is said to be infirm. He is weak. He is weak not because he is feeling sick or he had some sort of accident or he has some sort of disease. He is weak because he is very old. He is 90 years old. His body is infirm. His body is infirm. So you can use that in this sense as a body being weak due to old age, infirm, or you can say your argument is not based on sound reasoning, it is infirm, it is not robust, it is not sound, it is not valid. <coughs> That's all I have for today. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.